Tonight at 9, Ball State President Jeffrey Mearns updating students on COVID-19 protocol as Indiana's mandates change, what this means for students going forward. Students are lining up or more like signing up to get their COVID-19 vaccine on campus, what the wait times look like and what all you need to know. Are scammers attacking Ball State students? An update from campus officials and what they're warning students to watch out for. And the Muncie Smiles man is hitting the streets, but for a new cause, a story to warm the hearts of Muncie locals. High temperatures didn't even get out of the 30s today. However, we do got some much warmer air. Even the warmest of the season have all those details coming up. From the heart of Ball State University, live from the Unified Media Newsroom, NewsLink Indiana starts right now. We are getting more, and so for us, the capacity is constrained by the doses we're getting, but also about the level of staffing. We're talking COVID-19 in campus tonight. Good evening, I'm Anna Chalker. And I'm Grace Benkowski. Jumping right in tonight, students are wasting no time to get their vaccines. So much so that Zach Jones went to the site to figure out the latest at the Health Professions Building. Zach? Right, guys. Eligibility for students just dropped yesterday, and the on-site is only a walk away for Cardinals. But if you want to get your shot right here on campus, well, you better get that soon. Logging on tonight, the soonest you can get an appointment is May 7th. That's the last day of final week for students. I talked to some students today to find out why a site on campus was their top choice. I think it's super convenient that they opened up a vaccination site on campus to help college students get their vaccinations. I know that where I am, there isn't a bunch of vaccination sites yet, so uh, getting vaccinated here would be a lot easier and I could do a lot sooner. While some are relieved to have a vaccination site right here on campus, some say they're still ready to travel to lift up their sleeve. I'm getting um, the vaccine off campus um, at a pharmacy in my hometown just because it was easier because of how many people like on campus are getting the vaccine. So it was easier and more convenient for me to just go off campus. If you already have an appointment or plan to visit the site, there are two entrances on the north and south end of the building. To make an appointment, you can call 211 or visit our shot in .in.gov. But guys, you can still make appointment if you're willing to wait and if you're sticking around till the beginning of summer, but there is no official date on when they're extending it or when they're going to make more vaccinations available after May 28th. All right, Zach, thank you. As some students are making an attempt to get their vaccines, others are wondering if this means masks on campus are going away. Now, Indiana is five days away from lifting its mask mandate, and tonight we're hearing from Ball State President Jeffrey Mearns about what campus will look like after next Tuesday. Newslink Indiana's Tyler Brummett has been searching for answers all week. He's live in the newsroom. Tyler, what changes will be made? Well, Grace and Anna, right now, essentially nothing. Ball State President Jeffrey Mearns says that all current COVID-19 protocols are going to stay in place for the rest of the semester. Now, come next semester, things could change, but this comes as students are eligible to get vaccinated. But Mern says right now is not a good time for BSU to move forward. I thought to err on the side of precaution in order to be able to complete the semester safely. An anticipated decision the university community has been waiting for. Since Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb announced the state's mask mandate will become an advisory on April 6th, meaning masks will only be a recommendation. I will continue to appropriately wear a mask. It's the right thing to do. After that announcement, people wondering what will happen here on campus. An answer coming in an email Thursday morning. The existing protocols that we've had in place since uh, last August and that we've been refining along the way have been very effective in mitigating the spread of the virus on our campus. Even though things are opening up here in Indiana, most students on campus are not yet vaccinated, which is why President Mern says it's too early for students to ditch the masks and to stop social distancing. He reminds them that they need to stay six feet apart. We saw an uptick in cases uh, in the last two weeks, perhaps attributable to some of that social activity. And the folks in student affairs will continue to monitor that data and to selectively authorize certain uh, student activities off campus. And as the university keeps its current COVID plan, Mearns wants students to hang in there. Be prepared and optimistic about what the future will bring. We don't know exactly what, what it will be, but I guarantee you it will be brighter than it has been this past year. 
Mern says the university's trust committee will be talking about protocols for it next semester. They're set to do that soon. The president will then present the plan at the Board of Trustees meeting on May 7th. And Tyler, earlier this week, you mentioned it's unclear what will happen at the city and county level after the mask mandate has been lifted. Any update? Well, Grace, a lot of people, I'm sure they're having that question right now. So here's the deal. On Monday, I told you about how the city basically said, hey, we're going to follow what the Delaware County Health Department is putting forward. On Monday, I told you that uh, I reached out to the Delaware County Health Department. They didn't respond. On Monday, I reached out to them again today. Still no response. Ladies. Tyler Brummett, live for us in the newsroom. Tyler, thank you. But a different story down in the Circle City. Governor Eric Holcomb is sticking to his decision to lift the statewide mask mandate next week, even amid concerns from health experts about more contagious coronavirus variants and a request from President Joe Biden for states to keep COVID-19 protection mandates in place. This week, Holcomb has gotten urges from Kentucky's governor, Andy Beshear, to reconsider the mask mandate drop by Holcomb, saying he's not looking to change his mind. And Ball State officials are warning students today about possible scamming. This is coming as an ongoing IRS impersonation scan is targeting students and faculty here on Ball State's campus. Security services warned against emails from the Internal Revenue Service. The email shows the IRS logo and information regarding taxes. They'll ask you to click a link to claim refunds. Security service advise against opening any emails with links to ask for your personal information. And if you receive a fraud email, call the Technology Help Desk at 765-285-1517. Grace. Esports is holding a ribbon-cutting ceremony on campus for their new center. That's happening this Monday. The newly created varsity team joins over 300 other competitors. The Cardinals esports team is now officially a part of the MAC tournament. That ceremony will happen at 4 p.m. in the Robert Bell Building. And you know, today was a perfect day to sit inside, play some video games with the cold weather we were having. Yeah, Ryan, what was up with that? <laughs> well, we own the spring roller coaster ride here. You know, a couple of days ago, we were sitting at 73 degrees, and now we find ourselves in the, not even getting out of the 30s here. The good news is this is only a, so, a temporary setback for our temperatures. We're going to see some of the warmest temperatures of the season coming up next week. Well, I'll get to that in my full forecast in just a bit. But first of all, look at these temperatures right now. Chilly, 32 degrees in Muncie. Fort Wayne's at 31 degrees. Kokomo is sitting at 30 degrees at this hour. As you look at these winds, the winds are also pretty breezy out there as well. But we, right now, it's kind of down, it's calmed down a little bit. We'll say, uh, much higher than it was earlier. We're sitting at 10 miles an hour here in Muncie at this hour. So as you look at this radar, we're also looking at some snow, uh, some uh, lake effect snow out right there. I mean, again, we're not seeing, this is supposed to be winding down as well, so we should be clearing out at the, uh, as we go through tonight. Now take a look at the, the next coming up. We have cold temperatures for tonight. We also got those abundance of sunshine. And then we got a little surprise for you on your seven day forecast. I have all those details coming up. The Muncie Smiles man is back at it again, trying to make one difference one day at a time. News Link Indiana's Brittany Dobbins is joining us now to tell us what he's up to. Brittany? Yeah, Anna and Grace, it's not a rare sight to see the Muncie Smiles man out putting smiles on other people's faces, but when the costume drops, his turns for some hard work weather. Personally, I'm not a big kale person, but I'm not, I think kids die for this is what I'm told, so uh, it's like... It's like gold to them and cotton candy. Matt Pfeiffer, Muncie's very own smile man and a voice for kids, finding yet another way to serve the community. So if you followed me and you followed my story, um, it's had a lot of ups and downs. Pfeiffer decided to set a goal for himself. When I was about 16 years old when I got into foster care that my life purpose was to make a difference. Making a difference. With the help of some friends, Pfeiffer brought 3,000 pounds of baby food to Muncie from South Bend. It was a fast turnaround. He says he plans on giving the food to the people that need it most. Baby food is, is hardly and rarely in those boxes for family, so uh, this is a staple that I think that the Muncie community can use. But Pfeiffer doesn't do what he does just for himself. Because I didn't have a lot of that growing up, so um, I want to make sure that other kids don't miss out on on what I had to miss out on. Even though his self-doubts can be overwhelming, he does his best to keep looking forward. I always say that I think it's going to be 
uh, a scary day when I don't feel like I'm needed anymore. And I don't think that day will ever come and I hope not. Every day is a new day in Piper's eyes and things like this are just more ways to keep him going. Doing small things like these just helps boost my spirit and I know that it's helping boost other people in the community spirit, just being able to utilize the, uh, what I have to offer. all the food he has. He also wanted to make sure he found a location that is on a mixed bus route. That way everyone who wants to go is able to do so. Now the food will be given away next Wednesday, April 7th at 701 South Madison Street, which is across the street from the Muncie Public Housing Authority. Piper also says he is looking for volunteers to help with the distribution. And if you are interested, you can reach out to him on his email at mattbrice4 at gmail.com. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you, Brittany. Looking statewide now, doctors could be required to tell women undergoing drug-induced abortions about a disputed treatment that could stop the abortion process. That's as a bill has moved one step closer to approval in legislature. The state Senate Health Committee voted 7-4 to four to advance the proposal, despite objectives saying it would force doctors to provide uncertain information. Those against abortion, though, argue the bill ensures that women who may change their minds about ending their pregnancies have all the information they need. The Indiana House voted last month in favor of the bill and now goes to the full state Senate. One Evansville man will serve 110 years in prison. 48-year-old Ernest Lee Douglas has been convicted of two counts of murder for fatally stabbing his estranged wife and her ex-husband. Police did a welfare check and found the bodies in his wife's apartment back in August. Both were 43 and the Vanderburgh County coroner determined they died of multiple stab wounds. A breakdown of Biden's new infrastructure proposal and another check at weather in a moment. Riding the bus is an easy thing to do. Last year, we carried 60,000 riders from the Ball State area. 50,000 of those were students. Anywhere you want to go, Mitz will take you there. So I just moved in with his family and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay. I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. Welcome back. Gruesome new details surfacing about the shooting at a California business complex that killed four people, including a child. Investigators are still trying to piece together what led up to the attack, but they say a motive is emerging. Investigators offer a grim picture of what happened last night, saying this 44-year-old subject locked the building gates from the inside. When police arrived, shots were still being fired as officers worked to break through the gates. Once officers were able to break through, they say they found two women, one man, and a nine-year-old boy dead. A fifth person was injured and is in the hospital. The gunman also wounded and later taken to a hospital in critical condition. A semi-automatic handgun and backpack containing pepper spray, handcuffs, and ammunition were collected from the scene. Authorities are still investigating but say the attack was not random in that the suspect knew all of the victims. This is at least the 20th mass shooting since the Atlanta area spa attacks two weeks ago. 
body camera footage from the officers charged in George Floyd's death released, we do want to warn that the following video could be disturbing to some. This footage causing one witness to become so emotional the judge had to call for a short break. The footage showed officers approaching Floyd while yelling at him to put his hands up. It also showed Bo Floyd begging them not to shoot. President Biden unveiled a more than $2 trillion infrastructure proposal, but the focus is on more than just planes, trains, and automobiles. And to partly pay for the sweeping plan, the president wants to increase corporate taxes, a move some in Congress are already criticizing. But beyond investing in infrastructure, the sweeping American jobs plan dedicates billions of dollars to manufacturing while also providing money to care for aging Americans. Also to build or renovate schools and housing units, upgrade water systems, and bring access to high-speed internet, the president pledges his proposal will create green jobs while reducing climate change. To also help pay for it, a raise for taxes on businesses, including increasing the corporate income tax rate. The bill's passage in the evenly sp split Senate is far from certain, but Biden says he believes he can get it done. And Ryan, can we get one look at weather? Yes, we can. You see those temperatures are very chill. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Baby, you see, I cannot set you free. My lonely days are gone. That's why I'm never gonna let you go. Never gonna let you go. Babe, I'm never gonna let you go. No, no, never gonna let you go. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. They did, they did it. I think it's just vapor with flavor. It won't hurt my kid like cigarettes, right? Vaping is safer than smoking, isn't it? There's really not even that much nicotine in them, right? My kid? My kid, my kid knows it's dangerous. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping, maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Emotes say a lot, okay. but they can't say it all. Think your guildmate is struggling? Try these dialogue options. Go beyond emotes. Check in with your guildmates at seizetheawkward.org. So she's just gonna send it to you. Every day. Every day. Millions of people are connecting. And even though we're overcoming obstacles, watching each other's backs, and banding together, we should still make an effort. We should still make an effort. To get to know each other. On a deeper level. Father. Cosplayer. Mentor. Actor. It's time we take a step forward. It's time we take a step forward. Come together. And discover how accepting our differences can, can make, make us stronger. Welcome back. You know, Brian, I was freezing today. Are these temperatures staying for a while, or are we looking at some warmer ones coming up? Well, that's what we're looking at some warmer ones coming up. We don't have to worry about this right now. Tomorrow's going to be a little bit chilly, but after we get through tomorrow, we're going to see that those temperatures are going to really warm back up. We might even see a little bit of a surprise I got for you in your seven-day forecast in just a bit. But look at these temperatures, and this is not an April Fool's joke that we have here. 36 degrees was our high today. 36 degrees! There was nowhere close to the average high for 56, and of course not for 82 degrees for the night back in 1986. Now, if you take a look at these temperatures right now, 32 degrees in Muncie, 29 degrees in South Bend right now, and Indianapolis is sitting at 33 degrees at this hour. Now, if you take a look at the temperatures from this time yesterday, it's still 9 degrees cooler. It was still much chillier, 7 degrees chillier in Shelbyville. But you can see this warm air that's on the way out to our west, so we got some more warm air coming our way. So that's good news right there. It's also been pretty breezy out there. As you see, the wind gusts has been around 10 miles an hour in Muncie, and Fort Wayne is it's actually pretty light at 8 miles an hour at this hour. Now, if you take a look at those windshields, in fact, the factor in those winds, you're going to see that it's only 24 degrees uh, in Muncie, 20 degrees in Cocoa at this at this hour take a look at this radar we see that we have some uh, flurries lake effect flurries 
lake effect flurries in our area that's moving out into uh, moving out right now. You can see that it's pretty much associated pretty much with every, everybody else in the east right now that's seeing some of those lake effect flurries as well. So there uh, is uh, still some cold air in, in the area right now. As you take a look at tonight, it'll be clearing with a low of 29 degrees, northwest winds at 10 to 15 miles an hour. As you take a look at tomorrow when you wake up, it's going to be another chilly one, 29 degrees at 9 o'clock. It's only going to warm up to 48 degrees, still w below average for this time of the year. As you take a look at Easter, that look at Easter here, 71 degrees, a big, big difference from where we were going to be at tomorrow, even from where we were at today when we didn't even get out to 30s. Mostly sunny skies, and that's more like it for spring. Now, you take a look at this five-day trend, 48 degrees. Uh, of course, on Friday and Saturday, Saturday and Sunday, it's going to be an up, uh, lower 60, 70 degrees, 71 degrees on Sunday. But look at the surprise here, 80 degrees. You could possibly see our first 80-degree temperature of the season on Tuesday. That's it's amazing for us. As you look at this seven-day forecast, yes, 80 degrees on Tuesday. My goodness gracious, I can't wait to see that. But however, it calms down a little bit as we see temperatures only in the 60s as a cold front do come, does come into the area on Wednesday. And we're going to see that those temperatures are going to begin to really come, uh, come back down to earth a little bit. Not as cold, but, you know, still pretty uh, above normal for this time. Awesome. Well, thank you, Ryan. And Blake, can we get one look at sports? Delta High School's got a new volleyball coach. We'll tell you who she is next in sports. Hey, did you know 2.4 million loving cats and dogs in shelters and rescues need our help to find a home? Let's go to the shelterpetproject.org and meet a few are in a shelter near you. Harlow. Oh, she's one great listener who loves to hear all your stories. My kind of cat. Cerulo is a sweet, goofy boy who's eager to please. Sounds just like another dog I know. So go to the shelterpetproject.org, search your local shelters and rescues, and go for a cuddle with your next best friend. Adopt. Problems, the ones nobody talks about at cocktail parties. We go looking for them. No matter the obstacles, no matter the odds, we surround a community's most critical problems, and we fight. United Way fights for the health, education, and financial stability of every person in every community. Will you? It doesn't take a scientist to cure hunger or a fancy economist to create safe housing. It takes imagination, creativity, sweat equity. And I think of kids going to school hungry. Hunger, homelessness. In this land of plenty? Seriously? Come on, we could fix this. Help out or don't. The choice is yours. Weeknights, NewsLink Indiana brings you the news before you go to bed. But Friday mornings, you're waking up with Cardinal Weather. We've got the latest news headlines. Freezing temperatures have set in all the way down in Louisiana. One man dead after flooding in Venice, Italy. Up to the minute weather conditions. Cold temperatures are the story this morning. And of course, lots of fun. That's, it is not what funny. on earth is happening I there? I feel sorry for the little guy. I've got my I socks on. Weather. Annie with her curly hair, which is actually never curly. Join us Friday mornings at 8 on Facebook Live. Welcome back to Newslink Indiana. I'm Blake Dahlia with sports. One former Delta ringer is returning to the co court to coach high school volleyball. Former Eagle Kylie Johnson made quite the mark in her four years at Delta. She helped lead the team to three sectional wins as well as a regional title. Now Johnson also has spent the last decade coaching for Muncieana, a third of that time taking on the role as head coach of the 12 Open Peppers. Even though Johnson's tenure will be overlapping with her Delta duties, she says there's nowhere she'd rather be. You're not just coaching the kids that are there for four years. You have to start from the middle school, in the elementary, I mean, it's a lot. I would not be invested in another program if I, you know, hadn't gone to school. And now heading back to Ball State, a special day for six former athletes and one team. Cue up the script because these folks are going to be standing in the Hall of Fame. Leading off with Nate Davis, he was the man under center during Ball State's historic 2008 football season. He led Ball State to the GMAC and International Bowl Games as well as the MAC Championship. 
where the cards would ultimately fall to Buffalo. Now on to the golf course. Brittany Kelly, the first Cardinal to make an NCAA regional. She also was named Indiana Women's PGA Player of the Year after leading Team USA to a win at the inaugural Women's Cup. Then back to the gym. John Lee, a.k.a. Ball State's sixth member of the Thousand Point Club. He sits next to Mr. Windex, Teron Smith, who's Ball State's, one of Ball State's all-time leading rebounders. For track and field, 12-time MAC champ Patricia Soman. She was inducted today along with contributor Joe Hernandez and then the lone team to make it. That was the 08-09 Women's Basketball Club that knocked off defending, yes, national champion Tennessee in the team's NCAA tournament debut. And now speaking of NCAA and continuing with college sports, a scary moment in the NCAA tournament the other day. Early in the first half of the USC Gonzaga game, referee Burt Smith collapsed on the court. Now he was down for several minutes and medical trainers had to check him out. He eventually was stretchered off of the floor and definitely a scary moment there. Smith said he was feeling lightheaded on the sideline before he collapsed. Gonzaga's head coach Mark Few sent his well wishes to the official. You know, I was just shocked and scared uh, for him, and, and then, uh, uh, but I was able to stick my head in there a little bit and, and see that he was talking incoherent and tried to say a quick prayer for him and just uh, wished him the best. Now, Smith was not taken to the hospital, rather went home to be with his family. And on a lighter note, now moving on to the Final Four, which is taking place here in just a couple days in the basketball capital of the world, Indianapolis, Indiana. Now, what's on tap? Lots of can't-miss action here. Game one will feature a Lone Star State matchup. Two-seeded Houston playing number one Baylor. The Cougars relying on its number two ranked defense to keep up with the Bears' vicious offensive in check. Matchup number two pits two West Coast powerhouses against one another. Other with undefeated Gonzaga going to battle with UCLA. The Bruins have been on a sensational run in the tournament after being one of the last four teams selected. Now, how are you guys' bragging student? I mean, oh wait, I didn't see you on the list. He caught us there, yeah, Anna. It's we not did doing not. so well, is it? <laughs> well, no. thank you, Blake. And we're gonna give you one final check at weather after the break. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. like the rules to surviving Zombieland, there are steps you can take to be prepared for an emergency. It's the right thing to do. Talk with your family to make a plan. Look for safe areas to meet up if separated. And stock up on supplies. It's never too early to get prepared. So start now. Right now? Right now. You can't predict emergencies, but you can be ready. You're welcome, America. Visit ready.gov today to learn more. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back. Our anchor pick for tonight. One police department is getting some help from their furry friends at the Humane Society. Officers are showing the ropes to their new partner, Apollo. The outreach program pairs different officers with dogs from a Humane Society in Florida looking for their forever homes. Now, I love dogs, but I love warming temperatures even more. Ryan, can we get a final look at that weather? Yes, we got some good news there. We got some warmer wear on the way, some of the warmest air of the season. 
Look at Tuesday, for example. That's what I like to see. All right, thank you, Ryan. And that's all tonight for News Link Indiana. Be sure to join us tomorrow morning at 8 on Keeping Up With our Cardinal Weather live in Indy. And for news anytime, anywhere, go to BallStateDaily.com. Have a great night.